Welcome to Cleveland Park Congregational United Church of Christ for our Monday Thursday service of communion, foot washing, and tenebrae. Monday comes from the Latin word mandatum, which means commandment. Because on this night, Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment, love one another. You may have wondered why you walked over palms this evening to get to your seat. Wasn't Palm Sunday four days ago? Yes. And these palms have been lying here since, a dried out reminder of how very quickly things can change. The three parts of tonight's service are communion, known as the Last Supper in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Foot washing, found in the Gospel of John, and tenebrae, a Latin word meaning shadows, symbolizing our understanding that at Jesus' death, the light goes out of the world. This is a service about the passion of Jesus. We know Easter and resurrection will come, but tonight we acknowledge suffering and death. Tonight, we walk the Via Dolorosa, or way of sorrow, with Jesus and all who experience loss, betrayal, and pain. May God be with us. <clears throat> Tonight, we gather to remember a last time. We gather to remember Jesus. We gather to worship. We meet as Peter the denier, Thomas the doubter, and Judas the betrayer. We meet as the ones who silently fail to wash the feet of one another. We come with our fears and confessions about ourselves and our lives. We gather this night to walk with Jesus, our teacher, one last time. We travel through these day next days with him, watching from a distance. We begin at the Passover table. We move to the cross. People will recognize us as followers of Jesus simply by how we treat one another. Yet we are so often blind to the turmoil and disorder around us. We are frequently ignorant of the pain we cause. So how do we begin again to follow him? God who serves whenever and wherever I judge others, ostracize others, demean others, use others. Whenever and wherever I elevate myself, think only of myself, want only for myself, value only myself. Whenever and wherever I abuse power, crave control, 
covet praise, idolize wealth. come in Jesus to fill us with hope and peace, to bathe us with grace and mercy. In this healing grace, we know God's love. We remember and we will go forth to bring hope where despair resides, to be servants to those in need, to be last when we yearn to be first, to love as selfishly as we are loved, to love as selfishly as we are loved. Amen. Please all rise in body or spirit for our communion hymn found on page 419.
We gather for communion to remember the fellowship of Jesus, who ate with sinners, outcasts, and enemies. By eating with everyone, Jesus showed, showed us what God's kingdom is like in heaven and on earth. Tonight, we celebrate God's feast with one another as we remember the Last Supper of Jesus. Everyone is welcome at this table, just as you are, just as you are. I'll begin with the blessing of the bread and the cup, a blessing called for Holy Thursday by Jan Richardson. Let us bless the bread that gives itself to us with its terrible weight, its infinite grace. Let us bless the cup poured out for us with a love that drenches, that makes us anew. Let us gather around these gifts, simply given and deeply blessed. And then let us go, bearing the bread, carrying the cup, laying the table within a hungering world. On the night that Jesus ate his last meal, he took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and shared it with his disciples, saying, take, eat this, and whenever, whenever you get together, whenever you enjoy a meal with one another, do so in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, blessed it, and shared it with his disciples, asking that whenever they do so, they do so in remembrance of him. This evening, we will all come forth to the little communion table at the front of the sanctuary. I invite you to take the bread and the cup. There are gluten-free crackers if you require them, and the wine is grape juice. Come, the table is set, and everyone is welcome.
bread, the bread of life. The cup of blessing. We close with a prayer of thanksgiving. Loving and eternal God, thank you for these gifts of remembrance, of love, blessing, and peace. Help us to carry this message forward in our lives to share it with gratitude, inspired by your grace. Amen. Ancient supper rituals typically included people washing hands, not a surprise when most ate without a fork or spoon. But on this night, something else happened. Just before the Passover feast, Jesus knew his time had come. So after the meal, he got up from the table, took off his outer robe, tied a towel around himself, and poured water into a basin. He then began washing his friend's feet, wiping them with the towel. When he came to Simon Peter, that disciple said, Lord, you are not going to wash my feet ever. If I don't wash you, then you can't be part of what I'm doing. Master, then wash not only my feet, but my hands and my head. I need only wash your feet, and you'll be clean from head to toe. After Jesus had washed their feet, he put his robe back on and returned to the table. Then he said, Do you see what I have done? You call me teacher and master, and you are right for that is what I am. So if I, your master and teacher, have washed your feet, then you must wash one another's. For I have set an example for you. What I have done, you do, and be blessed. Another thing, for I am with you only a short time longer. I give you a new commandment. Love one another. In the same way that I have loved you, love one another. This is how everyone will recognize you as my disciples. But this is not simple. We need to practice over and over again. Tonight, we'll practice both serving and being served by washing and having our feet washed. Together we say, Jesus served, so do we learn to serve. Jesus served, and so we learn to be served. You're now invited to come forward, to have your hands or your feet washed. Once they've been washed and dried, you may return to your seat, reflect quietly on our God of service and love.
Compassionate God, you've given us a taste of the bread and cup from your welcome table. These rituals bind us in community, members of one body, blessed by your grace. Be with us now as we enter the garden, go to Golgotha and witness your passion. Remind us that there is light, even in darkness. Help us to trust his resurrection and new life.
I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and I lay down my life for them. There is no greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I have commanded. Love one another. Very truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn, but the world will rejoice. You will have pain, but your pain will turn into joy. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he came to that place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into the time of trial. He withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. So let us pray together. Mother, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. Judas, is it with a kiss that you betray me? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear, but Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who'd come for him, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay your hands on me. But this is your hour and power and the power of darkness.
Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. Peter followed at a distance, and when they had kindled a fire in the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. A servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it. Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else saw him. You are one of them. I am not. Then, about an hour later, still another kept insisting. Surely this man was with him, for he is a Galilean. I do not know what you're talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. Jesus turned and looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the words of Jesus, how he had said to him, before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept demanding, prophesy. Who is it that struck you? Yes. Who? They continued hitting him and heaping many other insults on him. When day came, the assembly of elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes gathered together and they brought him to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell, tell us. us. Son of God. You say that I am. What 
Further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him. We found this man inciting rebellion. Forbidding us to pay taxes to Caesar. Saying he is the Messiah. So Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and to the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent. He stirs up the people. He teaches throughout Judea. From Galilee, where he began, to this very place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was Galilean. And when he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was glad, for now he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at length, but Jesus gave no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. And then Herod and his soldiers began treating him with contempt and mocking him. Herod put an elegant robe on Jesus and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other, though before they had been enemies. leaders and the people and said you brought me this man as one who was inciting rebellion i have examined him in your presence and i have not found him guilty of any of your charges against him neither is herod for he has sent him back to us indeed he has done nothing to deserve death i will therefore have him flogged and release him then they all shouted together away with him Release Barabbas. Barabbas. Barabbas was a man who'd been put into prison for leading an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify. Crucify him. A third time, he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. But they kept demanding with loud shouts that he be, he be crucified. Their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand be granted. He released the man they, they had asked for, the one that they had been put into prison for insurrection and murder. 
and handed over Jesus as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of people followed him, among them the women who were beating their breasts and wailing. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me but weep for yourselves and your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, blessed are the barren and the womb that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen? when it is dry. Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with Jesus. When they came to the place which is called the skull, they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. The people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him. He saved others, let him save himself. If he is the Messiah of God. God's chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine. Save yourself.
one of the criminals kept deriding him. And us. But the other rebuked him. Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? We have been condemned justly. We are being punished for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. Jesus, remember me. I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon. And darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. Oh. 
tremble, tremble, tremble. It is done. It is completed. It is executed. It is ended. It is settled. It is finished. And always it causes us to tremble. <laughs> 